Hello, 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 this is Matt O'Leary, and today I'm reviewing the second album, Volcano, from the English psychedelic pop band, Temples. It seems like a long, long time since their 2014 debut album, Sun Structures, so a lot of anticipation built up from fans around this one. Yeah. Let me just get this out of the way. Tame Impala. Tame Impala, yeah, that's the elephant in the room. I had to address it. Feels absolutely necessary to just bring up how similar, how remarkably similar these two bands are. So Inner Speaker and Lonerism come out in 2010 and 2012 and sort of define this whole psych revival thing that's been at the forefront of modern rock for the past 10 years or so. And then Sun Structures from Temple sort of legs in there a couple years late in 2014. It's a little late to the party, but that's okay because this is a set of diverse, very memorable, and extremely well-written and produced tracks. Then Kevin Parker and the Boys give us Currents, an album that changes the formula a little bit, bringing this new, shiny, accessible electropop sound to the table. It's a hit, everybody loves it, everybody and their mother buys a copy, and Instagrams are sleek purple and yellow vinyl. So now, two years later, again, Temples follow their lead and give us this bright, flashy electropop sound with Certainty, the first single off Volcano with its magical Disney-esque synth line and beefy but inhumanly immaculate drumming. The desire for certainty and being sick of ambiguity, that message definitely resonated with me. And I've been humming these melodies in my head ever since its release. But on the other hand, it's like, what are you doing, Temples? Following this other band's arc, pretty much stride for stride, album for album. So right off the bat, even though I liked this song, Volcano lost major points for originality. And in my first three or four listens, it didn't really have an impact on me for that reason. But after some time, as pop music usually does, uh, this album became more familiar and you know, patterns started to emerge in my mind. And beyond that song's certainty, James Bagshaw's knack for song construction and home recording is evident. The excellent I Wanna Be Your Mirror leads off with arpeggiated folk balladry and some pastoral medieval flute. Just before it drops all that and transitions with a rumbling electronica into this optimistic, rollicking jangle. And they do a spot on John Lennon with that line, like he was before. Go ahead. Right now, listen to that one minute, 20 second mark line. Guys, John's back. Open Air is another more upbeat track with synthetic touches and a momentous refrain they just keep harping on over and over again until the end. The blueprint here does start to get a little old of them starting songs with these big, uh, kind of hokey woodwind or synth riffs. They do this for half, if not more than that, of the tracks. And don't get me wrong, I love a good riff, but some of these seem a little bit forced or less inspired, like on Open Air or the song Celebration. This is a similar issue I had with Sid Arthur's album, Apricity, from last year. These two albums are very, very in line in many ways. But even on these tracks, I can't pretend they're not catchy. Born Into the Sun or Mystery of Pop stick to the same sugary riff centric mold, the latter mentioning David Bowie and sort of being an homage to just the wonderful enigma that is pop music. It paints the scene of people singing together in a car. You know, they're telling somebody else's story, but still being inexplicably connected to each other through that story. I like the way In My Pocket and Oh The Savior employ these clean acoustic guitars to sort of change up the sound a little bit. And the most satisfying moment comes on the song In My Pocket in the second verse when they're repeating that verse and they add this beautiful little piano melody behind the main vocal. But even on these well-written tracks, they still end up relying on phaser-driven, reverberating synths and these big stadium rock choruses where James's falsetto sounds a lot like another James, James Mercer of the Shins. How Would You Like to Go is probably the one track that almost resists succumbing to this tendency to break into these big repetitive hooks. Uh, it still does, but it's a little bit less, you know, let's dance now and a little more moody and, you know, atmospheric. Overall, with Volcano by Temples, it's an album that's minimalistic in the sense that every instrument, every element can be picked out of the mix. It's not muddy at all. Uh, it's not all fuzzed out like a Ty Seagal record or that sort of side of psych. And it feels so uniform from track 
to track. It seems like every song elicits the same sort of mood and energy, which is certainly a downside for me, given that some structures seem to have so much more diversity within the songs. Beyond the simple writing of chords and melodies and harmonies, James and the rest of them seem to have such a vast arsenal of sounds I can just throw in here and there. It's like they have a bunch of fruit from the past 70 years of rock and pop music, and they put it into a blender and they grind, 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 and it comes out with all the elements still in there, but it's a flat, consistent product. A lack of originality for me can usually be compensated for by just really solid songwriting, and I think Temple's almost get there with Volcano. They almost get there. They execute these familiar sounds so flawlessly. But ultimately, this just lack of inventiveness really distracts me on this album. I think the band positions themselves on Volcano as musically talented, no doubt, but pretty much artistically irrelevant. They seem content on just riding the coattails of each passing trend. You know, I'm gonna put this album on and I'm gonna enjoy it. I'm just not gonna be displaying this one on a shelf anytime soon. This one gets a solid 6 to a 7 out of 10 on any given day. Let me know what you think of Volcano. I'd really like to hear your thoughts on this band as a whole and how you think they fit into this whole neo-psych sort of thing going on. Uh, yeah, as always, thank you so much for watching.